Matchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash patchworkheartministry today. Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry present Journeys in Faith. Now, here's Andy Santis. Hi, welcome to Journeys in Faith. Merry Christmas. It's so good to be here with all of you. Thank you for being here with us on this Christmas night. And I am so excited because a good friend of mine is here and she has so much to author. To, to offer us. She is a Catholic author and speaker. Her name is Rose Sweet. Welcome, Rose, and thank you for joining us on Journeys in Faith. Merry Christmas, Anne. It's happy to be here, and I noticed that you're wearing red, and I'm wearing green, so we're in the festive spirit, aren't we? Yes, we are. We are, and, and it's just one of the most wonderful days of the year, isn't it? I mean, uh, for, for those people who are people who celebrate their faith as we do, who believe in Christ and who are really moved by his birth and the celebration of what it means to our lives every single day. Uh, so it's just good to be here that we can talk faith on Christmas Day. So Rose, why don't we start out with, tell us about you. I mean, of course, I know you because you're also a member of our board of directors at the St. Raymond Anatas Foundation. We're so blessed. And Rose is our vice president. And <laughs> well, we're I know we always talk about that quite often. We have a standing little joke, and probably our listeners are tired of hearing it. But I always say the vice, I love being vice president because they do nothing. <laughs> Not <So>. really. <laughs> okay. okay. She does so much. We, we are blessed. We are blessed. So uh, I would love for all of you to learn more about Rose. I mean, some of you already know who she is. You, you've seen her, uh, read her books. You've been to her website. You know what she's done to help. Families affected by divorce and separation. And we'll start out with her story. So, Rose, please tell us, how did you get to doing what you're doing now? Because it's so well, awesome. Thank you. You know, this is about journeys in faith, right? Yes, it is. Well, sometimes you hear people say, my journey in faith was that I came to know the Lord Jesus and I fell in love with his blessed mother and now I say the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day at three and I don't mean to make fun of those things at all but conversion to holiness is not always smooth and saintly it is raw and real and my journey in faith thanks to my own stiff-necked stubbornness and sinfulness was like Mr. Toad's wild ride have you ever been on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride at Disneyland? I mean, seriously. Well, I love Disneyland. That was one of my favorite places to visit years back. But no, I, I don't know if I remember that one. <laughs> well, it's for the little kids, but I think every adult should go on there. You get in that little car that goes through this dark tunnel, and it is twists and turns, and it's colorful and exciting, but it's also, it's also painful and jarring and exhausting. That's what my life was like. There was a lot of color and beauty and goodness and excitement, but a lot. I brought a lot of pain on myself because I decided, like Eve did way back in the garden, that I didn't really need to listen to what God said. All, not all of it. I could figure some things out on my own. That is a big and slippery slope. So I was born in the 
50s in a good Catholic family. I'm the oldest of nine kids. And I had a wonderful Catholic education. Mom and dad really sacrificed financially and you know, long hours of driving every day to get us to Catholic schools. Back then we had good formation. We had good nuns and great priests who were down to earth and living their faith and courageous about their faith and calling all of us to go higher in our faith and our walk with the Lord. And that was real to me. I love Jesus. I love being Catholic. I love Mary. I love the angels and saints and all that stuff. And I had good formation until about high school. That's when the 60s hit and there was a lot of tumultuousness in our culture and people were throwing things out right and left, including the baby with the bathwater. And we had sayings like, hell no, we won't go. That was about the Vietnam War, but it kind of permeated everything like, hell no, I'm not going to obey curfew. I'm not going to do what you say, mom and dad or father or sister or government. And it was, we're still paying the price for that upheaval these 50, 60 years later. So I was swept away by the culture. I, I read Cosmo magazine instead of the Bible, you know, that was much more interesting to me. And that's what it, where I was learning how to be a woman and what it meant to be happy and how you find your own happiness and blah, 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 blah. So I never formally left the faith, but like statues, I put Jesus and Mary on the back shelf of my life and off I went. I had decided early on, cause I love being in a big family. I love being the oldest of all those kids. And mom and dad loved each other. And all I ever wanted was a husband, home, and kids. Um, I didn't have to have money. I didn't have to have a big career. It was, that was it. So I set out to get that. And uh, mom and dad wouldn't let us move out and get apartments or jobs or be self-sufficient. We good girls back then stayed home and waited for Prince Charming to arrive on the doorstep and ask our father's hand and for, our, for marriage. Well, nobody was coming along for me. So I decided to take the bull by the horns and um, I was dating a guy and I said, let's get married. Really in my mind, it was let's get an apartment so I don't have to be with mom and dad and all these other kids and then I could do my own thing and I could be free. Looking back, I never thought about it. I thought I was in love, but what I had done is reduced him to an object. I reduced him to a, a, a get out of jail free card. Um, he was my escape to the world that I wanted to be part of. I didn't know how to discern. I didn't know what was going on. And I was starting to believe as the culture was saying that it was okay for divorce. Not that you wanted to ever be divorced. Nobody wants to be divorced. But if it was really bad and you fell out of love, it was okay. God would understand. So that's, that was my belief system. So after about nine months of really a difficult and miserable time, I didn't know this guy was an alcoholic. And in short order, he started actually beating me. He threw me up against the wall one time and I was like shocked. I'd never been treated that way. I was confused. I, there were, there were no women's groups or women's shelters or, you know, and back then, Anybody, you didn't go to therapy or counseling unless you'd been in the nut house. That's what we called it. Uh, so, you know, nowadays we all go get our therapist and our, and our spiritual director and all that. But back then, it's you just kind of tried to figure it out yourself. Well, that didn't work very well for me. So I called my dad. Dad, come get me. So now, you know, long story short, it ended in a civil divorce. That was the year that no-fault divorce became real went into effect. So I didn't have to prove cruelty or alcoholism or anything. I just said irreconcilable differences. And now I'm free. Well, there was the question of annulment and I didn't have, I didn't know what that was, but my mother who was a very devout and practicing Catholic says, "You you need an annulment." And I said, "Well, what's that?" Well, that's when the Catholic Church takes a look at your marriage and determines that there was something seriously wrong from the very beginning and um, it declares that the marriage bond was null and you're free to marry again. Well, all I heard was free to marry again. So I go, okay, 
So my mom filled out my annulment paperwork. paperwork. And, you know, I still feel a little shame and regret, but I also have to laugh. I was just ridiculously immature and unprepared for marriage. And I was making, starting to make a big mess out of my life. I didn't go to therapy. I didn't get a sp spiritual director. I just went out and did the same thing again. And I know you know my story, and it's been decades ago, but I still feel regret um, that I went and married and divorced two more times after that because I was desperate for a husband, home, and kids. And now I'm competing with my sisters who are getting married and they're having babies. And that's like, I gotta, I gotta do this. In the meantime, because I had to and I wasn't going to go back home, I got myself in a very good career and I was making six figures and enjoying it. I loved work. I love work. But I still wanted the husband home and kids. So I now I started to direct my life and picked, I picked another guy. So I have this, this pattern I was unaware of. Here, you, here, I'll, we'll make a nice life together. I'll make the money. We'll have the kids. Everything will be great. So I picked guys who were really nice, but emotionally they were about 12 years old mm. because, and I was the mom and I was taking care of everything because I had been used to being a big sister and taking care of everything. I didn't understand really the relationship between husband and wife in marriage. And again, I, you know, short marriages, divorce, more, more annulment. And finally the, the last one I married outside the church. I was moving farther and farther away, um, you know, and I believed divorce was an option. But this last time I even believed I didn't even have to get married in the church because Jesus, he was hip, he was cool, and he loved me. And he and he knew. So all that rigid stuff from those old celibate guys in Rome, I mean, what do they know about love and sex and marriage, right? I was woefully naive and sinful. But God is very loving and he never quit chasing me and finally when I was in enough pain and shame and I thought here I am I'm going through a third divorce maybe it's not just the guys maybe there's something wrong with me maybe there's something wrong with me that those are words that nobody ever wants to say I mean and do you ever want to look in the mirror and go gosh Maybe something's wrong with me. It's, it's, it goes against our sinful nature. But I agree. At, yeah. But but in a, and here's the beauty of a big trauma or a big crash and burn. That's usually the place when God in the broken spirit and the crushed spirit, that's where He can come in, and grab our heart and do His work. And after my third divorce and a lot of other pain that went with that. I fell on my face before God and said, I guess in all my wonderfulness, I am a big failure and I've made a big mess and I need you and I'm ready now. While this was all happening, I started listening to Christian radio. They didn't have Catholic radio stations back then. And I listened to Focus on the Family, which for which I will ever be so thankful. And it was Christian men and women telling their conversion stories every day for 30 minutes on the radio. I loved those. I could hear people share their lives of sin, sinfulness and, and then conversion and then falling deeply in love with our Lord and trusting him and growing and being free. And I was like, I want that. I want that. I want that. So God made me hungry. He made me hunger for more of him to get back into my faith to get back into scripture, to learn what the Catholic Church really teaches. Um, at the same time, I had friends and even family members who were Protestants and said, you know what, all that Catholic BS, it's just, you know, it's not true. It, you guys worship cookies and uh, you, you idolize statues. And may I add right here, since it is Christmas, that everybody who has statues of Jesus and Mary and baby Jesus in the manger and cows and sheep, those statues, we don't worship those. You know, they, they remind us of the beauty of Christmas, of the beauty of the God who says, I will come in the flesh to save you. 
so I, I, I grew and I, I discovered, um, you know, the, the teachings of the church. I discovered, um, Catholic answers. And I have to give a shout out to those people. They have been, and you know, I'm, you're shaking your head. They're wonderful. And I wanted answers and I wanted a Catholic answers. And sure enough, there's this thing called Catholic answers and anything that you want to know about our faith and how it incorporates into our life, you can get there. So I followed them religiously for decades. Then I discovered Theology of the Body, St. John Paul II's beautiful work, complex work on what it means to be human, what it means to be male and female, and what marriage really is all about. And I was so happy. And then God, you know, opened doors for me to start divorce healing workshops. He was growing me up and, and, and helping me become the woman that he'd always intended me to be, finally. And now I was able to turn around and help other people who were lost and looking for hope and help. So I started writing books and uh, giving retreats and, you know, being on radio and TV and being criticized by a lot of people for being three times married and divorced. And who am I to speak? And there is some truth to that. Who am I? But I always take great consolation in St. Peter, who denied Jesus three times. And that earlier this year, I was able to be um, in the Holy Land, on the Sea of Galilee, in the water, at the shore where Jesus invited Peter to sit with him at the fire, where at a previous fire, he had denied Jesus three times, like I had denied our Lord three times. And Jesus invited him to undo and to redeem those three denials with three promises. If you love me, Peter, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs. And I realize St. Peter has been, become very special to me because I am a three-time loser when it comes to that. And yet, God loves those of us who turn from that and he will equip us. He's equipped me to go out and feed his sheep, feed his lambs. And out of my stinky, sinful mess, he has brought an international divorce healing ministry. International. And I just got a call the other day from a gal in Malaysia. I don't even know where Malaysia is, <laughs> but maybe I do, but I kind of don't, right? And she's running a divorce group and she reached out, she found me on the internet, and she's she wants some help. Um, I'm working with people in Australia and, and South Africa. This is God's beautiful mercy to all of us who have decided to find happiness on our own terms and have made a horrible, sinful mess and, and literally left, uh, talk about a journey of faith, a, a road of carnage of hurt people, broken families, wounded, wounded psyches. But he's in the business of healing. He came to us as a, as a vulnerable baby to show us how to grow into a powerful force for good, to, to redeem everything, to redeem our fallenness, to give us hope. That's what Christmas Christmas is about hope. We don't know what's going to happen in the future or how we're going to get there, but we have hope and we can count on it. And that's what I love about this Christmas season and that, that, that we are sharing this, you and I together, you and I who work with hurting families, to offer them, to, to remind them of the hope that God has for us, not just at Christmas, but every day of the year. Oh, Rose, that, I love to hear your story. And I have heard it before, but every time you tell your story, I learn something new. You know, but there's it's always because one I little... change it every day. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I, know, no. I know. But I learned something new about you. And it also helps my own faith because I, I believe you completely and, and agree with you that God takes our weakness and that's what he uses to teach us what we can do to help others after we've kind of overcome it in some ways. Maybe not completely overcome it, but as we're working our way back up, he uses us to be able to use our gifts to make an outreach to those who are going through 
challenging times. And like you said, that's what we do. Yes. And, you know, here's the, here's the rhythm of it. First, he calls us into his arms. He calls us into his heart. And that's where he changes us and fills us. That relationship, that first step is most important. If we think we can go out and help people and save the world and without going to him first, we're not going to do a very good job. Doing it on our own, we're going to make a lot of mistakes and even make it worse. So I, I always like to say it's like a wife. First, I'm a wife, uh, and then I'm a mother. First, I am one with my husband. Then I have something rich and beautiful to go out and to give the children. And I am, by the way, you know, the end of this story is after almost a few decades of being single and not wanting to ever try marriage again because I was pretty bad at it, um, I went to my 40-year high school reunion. And there was my boyfriend from senior year. And the chemistry was still there and it scared me because I didn't want to be sinful again and I didn't want to displease our Lord. Uh, so I remember on my first date with this guy, I broke all the rules. That's how I say it. And everybody goes, what? I go, no, no, not that, not that. I told him everything on the first date. Mm. Um, I've been, I've been sinful. I'm not having sex outside marriage ever again. And now I understand why it is, why you save sex for marriage. And the marital act is an expression of wedding vows and purity and chastity is makes you strong, not weak and blah, 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 blah. And I went on this big game of, you know, I gave him a lecture and he goes, phew, I just wanted to buy you a drink, you know? <laughs> and, and I go, I know that was a lot, but this is who I am. And I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste mine either. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he listened. Because he, he, was, he was done with doing the old way and not having it work. So um, I did remarry in the church, and um, I got three beautiful stepsons in the deal. So life is good. Oh, I, I just love that story. I do and, too. And as a friend, you really are a treasure to me personally, and also, of course, the foundation. But I just love spending time with you on these shows so that not only I can learn more about you, but others especially can learn about all the wonderful, not only the wonderful work that you're doing, but just who you are and, and how God has worked through you. I think that's incredible. Thank you, Anne. And I you know, it, it takes me back to those Focus on the Family uh, episodes I heard back in the 70s and 80s, um, you know, people telling their stories and how that motivated me. And now I get to do the same thing. And I'm so, that's a big fat Christmas present that God has given me. So it's well, all I think good. you're giving a, a big fat Christmas present to the people watching and listening on podcasts too, because your story really does touch all of us. So thank you so much. Uh, we do have to take a quick break. So during that break, you can also check out Rose's website at rosesweet.com. We have a lot more to talk about, so stay tuned here on Journeys in Faith. Hi, my name is Ann DeSantis, and I'm the director for the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. You can learn about us on our website at nonatis.org. I'm here to tell you today about two great podcasts that I hope that you will tune in. The first Tuesday of every month at eight o'clock, we have a podcast specifically for Catholics affected by divorce. From eight to 9 p.m. Eastern, go to Philly Nonatis on YouTube to subscribe. In addition, we also have a podcast the last Thursday of every month. That's also at eight o'clock Eastern time for one hour. And that one is for families in crisis. We have some really great guests coming up soon, so hope to see you then. Please also consider the fact that you can make spiritual direction appointments with us, with our spiritual moderator. All you need to do is go to our website on the contact form and just reach out to us. We'd be happy to hear from you and look forward to setting up an appointment. So we'd love to connect with you. Please share this video and let people know that we're there for families affected by divorce and also families in crisis. Thank you.
Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network present the Discover Your Mission series. Now I had been brought up without any prayer, without Bible, without church, nothing of that kind. And so when my father died, I became suicidally depressed. I, I had no desire to live. And yet, by the grace of God, uh, whenever I got to the point of actually taking my life, I always had this interior conviction that if I took my life, I would simply find it again on the other side and it would be permanent misery. But it wasn't until I became a wife and a mother and I began to try and pass my faith on to my children that I realized that everything I knew about Jesus was memorized doctrine. I was a good man, I was a good father, I was instilling the sacraments into my family. But, uh, I was definitely not intentional, I was stuck broke in my faith. But what kind of strength did he have? Jackie did not just have a strength of body or baseball skill. He had a strength inside of his spirit, a courageous meekness that empowered him to play the game. And I tell him what is going on with me and he's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, no, no. I think this is like some sort of miracle, dude. And he's like, okay, you know, of course, but I'll believe it when I see it. Honey, you've been trying to quit and you've been saying this and saying that. And I'm, a, you know, he, his big line to me is, you shouldn't say things <laughs> because I never follow through on them. And so this was week after week, month after month. He is looking at me like, this is a miracle. There is no way that you on your own could have done this. So we are called to sing. All of us are called to sing. All of us are called to express ourselves and join our voice into the unity of the church. Uh, often with my choirs, I, I ask them to listen to each other, to listen to the, the sound that they make together as one. That's what we're aiming for through the harmony or unison, we're aiming for a one sound. You need to decide. What are you going to participate in? Are you going to participate in the historic Christian idea of the altar of sacrifice, which is in the Eucharist, or not? Okay, so we can take a break for a minute or two, okay. and then we'll come back. So that was awesome. Thank oh, good. You so much. And the timing is just perfect, right? Yes, that was okay. perfect. Okay. okay, so we'll go back in, and then you said we'll talk about your writing and what we do. To, maybe we can start out with what we do, and then the rest of the time we'll spend all about your writing and all the other okay. things you do. Okay, good. Okay. Hi, welcome back here to Journeys on Faith on this Friday evening. Merry Christmas again. It's so great to be here. And on the first half of the show, Rose Sweet, my wonderful guest, talked about her own faith journey. And it was just wonderful to hear it for me, and I'm sure for you too. So uh, we have a lot more to talk about. Now, I think I mentioned to you before on this show that Rose is also on the board of directors for the St. Raymond Anatas Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. And during the commercial break, you saw our little commercial there, uh, learning about what we do and what, what our mission is. We were formed through a religious order. It's called the Mercedarian Order, and you can learn about them at orderofmercy.org. And I'm here located in the Philadelphia area, but the Mercedarians are actually in four sections of the United States. They're in Cleveland, they're in St. Petersburg, Florida, Western New York, and as I said, headquartered in Philadelphia. So back in 2015, Rose went to Philadelphia for the World Meeting of Families with Pope Francis there and, and many thousands of people. And she gave some talks there about her ministry. And she met some of our Mercedarian friars there. And the friars had been praying about developing a ministry 
to help families. And they weren't sure which direction they were going to go in for that. But after a lot of prayer and just kind of waiting to see how the Holy Spirit would work uh, as time progressed along, they decided to try to begin to uh, make outreach to those affected by divorce and separation. And it was all because they met Rose, because they heard her talk, and it made them think to themselves, maybe this is a good first direction for our foundation. So maybe we can take it from there, Rose, because you got on the board of directors, and that was even before I was on, you know, a, a member minute. of the team, right? I got railroaded into the board of directors. Oh. <laughs> Later, I got an email. Her, her vice president has gone. Could you just fill in temporarily? And I'm like, oh, here we go. But you know what? <laughs> I am so glad it happened. I fell in love with the Mercedarians. When I, when I heard their story, and can I just talk about that for Please a minute? Please do. I love this. So <clears throat> St. Raymond Anatus. And I didn't know what that meant. I mean, it's not born. It's he was born cesarean, right? Yes. And he's a patron of expectant mothers or difficult births. Well, I, as I do dove more deeply into learning about the saints who came from this order, they have this history like when the, you know, the, the Muslims were coming and invading Europe and stealing, you know, kidnapping Christians and saying, okay, renounce your faith and you live. Or if you don't, you die, you know, you know, slit the throat and everything. So the Mercedarians came to the rescue. You know, these saints like would put on the clothes and enter into the country and sit down at the table and smoke the hookah. You know, maybe I'm making that up, but, you know, and sit and speak the language with the Muslims. And they would negotiate and bargain with big sacks of gold to ransom the Christians who were in captivity. And this became a nice business for the Muslims, right? And But a lot of the times, you know, they didn't have money. They were getting money from the, Merc you know, the Mercedarians were raising money and they ran out. And so they would give their very lives. They would then say, you know what? Take me, you know, free those prisoners and you can put me in jail. Put me in rags, beat me, scourge me, starve me. And I was like... So their fourth vow is, after poverty, chastity, and obedience, my life for your freedom. And I was like, that's what Jesus does. That's exactly what Jesus does for us. I go, and I, I, I love that story. My life for your freedom. And in a sense, that's what I've done, is try to give my life for the freedom of other people who are caught up in bitterness, fear, anxiety excessive worry, depression, despair. You're not free. You're trapped by those things. And let God speak to you and ransom you through what I can do. I want to be there for you. I will give my life for your freedom in that sense. And so, of course, I had to become, you know, a third order lay mercedarian. And uh, I, I just love all you guys. Oh, we love you too. And I mean that because we've developed a friendship through working together and also doing things like this, these podcasts and these shows that we've done together for the Sewing Hope podcast and also for this and also for the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation. So we're so grateful. And you're right. I mean, it's all about uh, my life for your freedom. And that's what we try to do also with this work too with the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation. And it, the work is will always be with us. You know, like Jesus said, the poor will always be with us. Well, the hurting and the hopeless and the people in danger of losing their faith will always be with us. And as St. Paul said, we complete what is lacking in Christ's suffering and death and, you know, salvific work. In other words, God invites us to continue his work. So we're, we're, we're hitching our wagon to Jesus. And, and following in his footsteps and bringing hope to those in pain and in despair. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing to be able to be given that gift to make that outreach. You do such a great job. You know, if, if whoever's watching right now, you or someone you know might want to get in touch with Rose because she does personal appointments and, and coaching. And if you go to rosesweet.com, right on the website, it, you say there uh, that you are your Catholic coach. And I love that. Tell us more about that. 
Well, I realized when I got lost in my life is it's because I was trying to live my life and all my relationships by having my religion on the shelf. And I know now that it's never meant to be, the two were never meant to be separate. Talk about an unnatural divorce. You know, our faith and our religious beliefs should be married permanently to the rest of our lives. So I, I help people put their religion back into their relationships. Whether they're married, divorced, single, old, young, it, it doesn't matter. We're all wired for happiness. Uh, and God has shown us how to get what we want, but we're like adolescents trying to push the envelope and still trying to figure it out on our own. So um, that's what I love to do with people. Um, my coaching is about dreaming again. Where are you in your life? What's gone wrong? What do you, where do you want to be? Okay, that's good. That's the dreaming part. Now let's put together a plan because there's a scripture verse in the Old Testament that says, without a plan, the people perish. So if you want to get to holiness, if you want to get to happiness, you got to have a plan how to get there, right? Just, just don't get in your car and start driving. So that's what I do as a, as a Catholic coach is say, what does the church say? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? You know, what did some of the wise saints and mystics who came before us, how did they handle this problem? This isn't just old, archaic, traditional, you know, muckety-muck. This is real life. And we can still draw on the wisdom, uh, you know, of, of the church teachings and the saints. And I love it. It's alive. Our faith is alive. And, and it's very exciting. And I, you're right. Your, our faith is alive. And you do a great job with your writing to express that. I love your writing style. Your writing style is like it's not boring in any sense of the word. It's, it's very, um, it, it's directional. It really is. It's directional. It's not just, you know, as you said, muckety muck or whatever words we, we use there. Uh, it's, it really is a, a lot of, a, a lot of, of really excellent uh, pieces of advice from the saints and, uh, and much, much more and on prayer so tell us about that, because I know you have been a writer for quite a while. Well, thank you, Anne. And I, this is a gift to me because I love talking about this stuff. So thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I first started writing the and speaking, the doors to the Catholic Church were not open to me yet. I actually started in the Protestant world, giving women's retreats mm -hmm. and working with Protestant authors and speakers who were wonderful people. And I remember the first time I went to the big Christian booksellers convention a uh, long, long time ago and walking up and down these big convention hall aisles of all these beautiful books and art and products, uh, uh, Christian. And then the Catholic section was like the last two little rows way over in the corner, you know, and I would walk up and down those rows and see lives of the saints and, you know, the canon law and the history of the sacraments and I was like I don't think I fit in here I'm a I'm a much more down to earth tell a funny story tell a joke talk, let's talk about the mess of our kids diapers and our husband's problems and mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of that in the Protestant world but I thought okay Lord you thy will be done and I just waited and pretty soon the door began to open for Taking the beauty of the sacraments and canon law and lives of the saints, which seemed dull and boring to some people, but that's the basis of then talking about our children and our husbands and our careers and our dreams um, and marrying, again, marrying the two. So in short order, I began working in the Catholic world and I was just thrilled beyond belief. Um, and I started writing a uh, uh, and being able to introduce our Catholic faith into my books. So I started out with books. The immediate need was people in divorce. I really wanted to hit that. There was nothing in the Catholic Church at that time. There were a few things, but I wanted something really great. And so I, I gathered Dr. Ray Garendi and Father Mitch Pacwa from EWTN and Christopher West on Theology of the Body, Father Donald Calloway, 
who some of your listeners might know. Um, he's a Marian priest and had three fathers by the time he was 10. So he, he was a child of divorce. So I put these people together and we created a beautiful video series called Surviving Divorce. And it's a 12-week um, ser uh, video series in, in parishes all around. We talked about that earlier. So people can really get hope and support and the truth about Catholic Church teachings. Um, so I, I created that. I wrote a lot of books on you know healing from divorce. And then I, I got, this is some of the most fascinating work I do is on annulments. It's a scary topic for a lot of people. It's very misunderstood, but it is absolutely common sense and rich and mercy and justice. And uh, I've been to the underbelly of a lot of people's marriages and seen a lot of dark and horrible things. But I also have seen the mercy of God in this process. So I wrote on annulments. I wrote a book. Recently, in recent years, though, as I did my retreats around the country for people, I noticed that in healing from divorce or any trauma, we have to go back down to what motivates us. And I, and I know what motivated you to put on that pretty red top today. <laughs> Because you thought that you looked pretty in it and that made you happy. I put on this green thing because I like the color and it makes me happy. So I realized the desire for happiness is what motivates us to do everything that we do and everything that we say from morning, noon, and night. So I went, I explored how do we heal then from chasing after all these other false or not lasting happinesses to the true happiness. So the talks in my retreats have now emerged out of divorce to the deeper issues of what is happiness? What is romance? What is marriage? What does it mean to be single? Can you be single and happy? Um, and my latest book that just came out is A Catholic Woman's Guide to Relationships. It's number three in a series of four. I should have had a copy of it in front of me here, but I don't. It's so pretty. It's a little, they're little hardcover books. They're perfect for gifts. Uh, and number four is in the works and that will be out next year. So the first one is happiness, romance, relationships. And then this last one will be on the classic four temperaments, which is another thing that I love to teach and to live. Um, it's all, all about our faith. So anybody who got an Amazon gift card today. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, uh, that was your idea. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, you know, maybe you could go to my website, rosesweet.com slash store and see where my books are. And, uh, you know, get that for the woman that you love or for yourself. Um, and then next year at Christmas, I'm going to be saying, get all four, get the gift package, you know, so... <sighs> Yeah, it's it's an excellent gift, really. I mean, here we are, Christmas Day, and uh, almost hopefully we're at the end of the pandemic, right? I was going to say in the middle of a pandemic, but hopefully this is the tail end of it. So we didn't get together quite as much. I know here in Pennsylvania, where I live, that our um, governor wasn't recommending people to get together on something like a holiday like today, or you know, up up until the end of this year. So uh, there's a lot of gift cards being sent and emailed over. And so this would be the perfect gift to go on Amazon and go to Rose Suite and get this new book on the Catholic Women's Guide to Relationships. You know, and here's my secret. Um, I hope my publishers never watch this, these, these, uh, but it makes, it always ups, I was gonna say, it makes me mad. It, it disappoints me that I write and speak and work with in my coaching a lot of men and because they our truth about happiness and our desires for love and sex and romance and all that are universal and and both sexes want that happiness but apparently the book buying public for self-help or relationship books is women 80 percent supposedly is of the book buying public is women so they believe and i they probably know more than i do hate to admit that, uh, <laughs> that by putting a Catholic woman's guide on the, on my books that they will sell more. So that is, and then some of my close male friends, I say, look, I'll give you the book for free, 
if you read it and you like it as a man, will you post something on social media? So a lot of them have. They go, this is great stuff. We loved it. So it's not so there's just a lot of stuff in there that anybody can, can read and get something from. You don't have to be a, quote, Catholic woman. That's right. To get the book. If you have a head and arms and legs and, and a heart <laughs> and you desire to be happy in life, um, there's stuff in there for you. There's a lot of good stuff. That's great. Now, does it come in Kindle? And is it on audiobook too? I just wanted to mention that for the people watching or listening. You know, I don't know yet. I okay. don't think it's audio. Yeah, Kindle and all that, but uh, I'm not sure about audio. But the, I'm sure I'll be working on that this next year. I'll call my publisher and say, let's let's do that. Because I know, especially, um, you know, my husband is even having trouble with his eye eyesight now and uh, was asking me. And I was like, what? I don't know. So thank you for that. We'll check that out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love, I'm an Audible person. I have a membership to Audible. So you can listen to those books at any time, but, but you're just an awesome writer. I love your writing style and I love your books. Thank you, so man. I highly Thank recommend you. them for everybody who's here with us and let your friends know, let your friends know too. Uh, well, I I, as, oh, I'm sorry, Rose. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. And I was going to say, as we're going to be wrapping up pretty soon, I just wondered if there was anything else that you wanted to talk about because uh, this is Christmas day this is one of the most special days of the year for, for we as Catholics and, and Christians. And, you know, even people who don't celebrate faith, they, they love Christmas. Uh, let's talk about that. Well, one of the things that I've learned is that God made sure that his beauty and his truth and his goodness are everywhere. Because those are invitations. Those are part of who he is. I mean, they, that he is perfect beauty, goodness, and truth. And he's constantly inviting every soul, every person into that love, into his love and his divine life. And it's around us everywhere. And the joy of Christmas, you don't even have to believe in Jesus. I mean, I wish everybody did. But if you don't, you're, I know you're still drawn to the goodness, to the sparkle, to the life, to the color, to the celebration. Those are doorways into something greater and deeper and more mind-blowing. It doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. So I would say Christmas, whatever, whatever deep joy and longing that you have that's satisfied with all the music and the food and the drink and the fellowship and the love, it's a foretaste. It's the appetizer of what we will experience in the abundant life with Christ. Mm, so beautiful. Thank you so much, Rose. And thank you so much for being a guest on Journeys in Faith. I definitely want you to come back to the show again because we can do a part two, a part three. <laughs> There's going to yeah. be more to talk about later on. Yes, yes. Thank you, Anne. And thank you for the opportunity to bring God's um, love in a special way to lots of people. God bless and Merry Christmas too. Same to you. Thank you. Now, as we're ending this show, I want to ask you all to please go to another site. It's called patreon.com slash patchworkheartministry. And there will be a video there called Five Minutes of Faith. And Rose will be joining me for that short video where you can learn about uh, more of those four levels. L Rose, tell us a little bit more about that so they can know what to expect. I'm going to share what came out of my recent book on relationships. It's the four rules of relationship that we get from Jesus. Yes. So please do join us there again, patreon.com. Everyone, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next week. Okay, thank you so much. Journeys of Faith is a production of Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry. For more information about Journeys of Faith, email info 
at fiatministrynetwork.tv. And be sure to friend, follow, and like us on social media. Just search Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis.